Hey guys, what the heck is going on? Sam here. So coming at y'all today with another video um, for the 101 Goat Deck segment that we have been doing on this channel. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you guys the IBK Control Deck. Now this is a deck that stands for Iron Blacksmith Kotetsu Control. And I'm super stoked to show you all this deck, but before we get started, uh, I want to say thanks again to everybody that has been uh, liking the videos, everybody that has newly subscribed, and everybody else um, that has been leaving your um, feedback and support down in the comments section. I really do appreciate um, hearing everybody that has been saying um, that certain tech choices and um, you know certain decks that they've seen on this channel are things that they're now using. So that really does make my day. That's what I'm trying to aim for with this channel in general. I'm really passionate about old school formats and um, for Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm really just trying to help keep these formats alive as well as giving you all just kind of a library of things to really look at as far as this format goes. So make sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I really, really do appreciate it, guys. Let me know what you think about this video as well. So today I'm going to be showing you all IBK Control. And this is a super fun deck. It is a very um, skillful deck. And it's one of those decks where um, I know this is kind of Yu-Gi-Oh! and Go format in general. But, you know, resource management is just, like, really important. And that's what this deck really just revolves around. And this this deck also revolves around um, all of these things, and it revolves around having patience. Um, patience is a huge thing with this because you're not going to be able to OTK with this deck. This isn't a deck that you're going to win in the second or third or fourth turn or anything like that. Most of the time that you win with this deck, um, you will have ran through half of your deck for sure, um, if not more or somewhere around that because it's just the way that the deck works. It takes a lot of patience, and it takes a lot of really just grinding it out with your opponent. And if you can um, out-resource your opponent with... Um, the way that this deck works and the strategies that this deck has built into it, then that's how you will win with this for sure. So um, I'm going to showcase this for you guys and let me know what you think. So um, this is Kotetsu. Kotetsu, you play three copies of him. He can add an equip spell from your deck to your hand. Now, people don't play him in the main in a whole lot of decks um, because outside of things like Premature and Snatch Steel, all of the other equip spells are really just kind of like halfway good in certain scenarios. Um, not that you know certain cards aren't really great, but Premature and Snatch Steel really just are great like 99.9% .9 of the time that you can get them. So that's why you really don't play um, this guy in the main in most cases. So um, this card's really cool. And whenever I go to build a, um, a deck for just, you know GOAT format or Yu-Gi-Oh! in general, I, I have a lot of cards that I'm like, okay, this, this card would be really cool. I'm going to try to put something together with this card. And then if I see two cards that go together really great, then I'm like, okay, cool. Let's get the ball rolling on this deck idea and see what we can come up with. And that's where I came up with the idea for these two together. Now, this deck is really fun. And this tech, man, guys, this is just, I'm so, I cannot express how much patience you have to have to work a deck like this. This is um, something, Dracmore. I don't even know really how to pronounce this, but I'm going to um, read it for you guys. The equipped monster cannot attack. Destroy the equipped monster at the end of the controller's second turn after this card is activated. At that time, this card is returned to the owner's hand. So this, in in theory, is a plus one because if you can destroy your opponent's monster with this, then this card can go back to your hand. But if your opponent ends up um, destroying this card with something like, um, you know, Heavy Storm, MST, Dust Tornado, something like that, then it ends up being a one for one. And if you've you know watched any of my other videos, you know that one for ones are totally okay because if you build a deck that allows you to plus, then in the long run, you should be able to out-resource your and out grind your opponent. So that's really where this whole entire strategy comes from. And that's the whole idea of the deck and what I decided to build the deck around was the fact that you could search a plus one um, out of your deck potentially. So um, yeah, this is a really, really cool um, idea that I just you know kind of ran with uh, probably a couple months ago and I've just been kind of working on it here recently. So um, now to search the uh, Kotetsu, you think that you'd be able to play Rota like, but it's not a warrior, it's a beast warrior. So um, we can't play Rota to search it, but we can play UFO Turtle. UFO Turtle is one of your main beaters. It's one of your main pokers. It's one of your main floaters of the whole entire deck. This card is really cool. And what's really cool about this card is uh, usually with field floaters, tomatoes, and uh, shining angels and stuff, those are the main ones that people use. So this card doesn't have a whole lot of uh, room to shine, but uh, I so I thought it was really cool to put in, in a deck like this. So UFO Turtle is really cool. It's got 1400 attack, and like all the other ones, it special summons a fire monster based on the attack. So it can be a copy of itself, or it can be Kotetsu. So this is a really good card to just keep poking with, and then your opponent has to out it with things like um, DD Warrior Lady, Exile Force, 
or like a chaos monster or something, if they keep running into it, then you're just going to um, deck thin or just get what you need out of your deck. That's really just kind of how it goes with cards like this. So UFO Turtle is a great card. So whenever you special summon out Katetsu and, you know, special in the face of attack, we have to get them face down. So we play cards like Triple Book of Moon and double Tsukiyomi. Now these cards obviously can flip Katetsu face down so that you can utilize his effect again. Now Book of Moon can be um, just kind of more or less a one for one because if you flip him face down then your opponent has to out him with something like knock or exile force or you know something like that and then you will end up um, you know going one for one with your opponent or if they run over it then it will float a card back to your hand so Book of Moon is just a really good you know just a break even card but you can plus if you're poking with monsters and then they um, uh, try to activate something like you know ring of destruction or mirror force or something and then you end up flipping them face down and then your opponent has to out them again so that's really kind of like why you want to play you know three book of moons now along with the book of moons and the Tsukiyomi I couldn't make just this combo you know go together because these are only just a few cards out of the whole entire deck so I wanted to make sure that the whole deck kind of went together um, as a whole so we played uh, two Tsukiyomi, two Dekoichi, as well as two Magician of Fate. Now, if you guys have watched any of the other deck profiles that I put up recently, like the um, the Gear Smoke or the Chaos Flip Control, it's kind of somewhat the same um, aspect as far as like the flip goes. Um, actually, it pretty much is the exact same strategy. It's just kind of mixed with a lot of different other, you know, equip cards and, you know, that kind of stuff and really just kind of going plus on your opponent without the Chaos Monsters. That's what this deck really does. So um, if you can use, use Tsukiyomi to abuse things like Katetsu in your flips, then that's really kind of like how you end up plus in. And I've said this in, a, in past videos, but I'm going to say it again. So if you end up having a flip effect monster and you just keep flipping it face up and then you either add a card back with Faith or draw a card or search a card with Katetsu, just Tsukiyomi flip it face down. Don't even attack with Tsukiyomi if... Um, your opponent has anything face down don't chance it just let it keep coming back to your hand and make your opponent have to out your board before you carry on with the game because sometimes you can plus two or three or four cards if they don't have an answer for this with something like ring instruction or you know trail tribute or something like that if they really just don't have a way to you know out this or attack over the decoy or something then uh, you guys are just really going to plus with these cards. So that's the whole uh, theory behind all the flip effects that we play in this deck and the UFO turtle and search and the Katetsu. And then we play some one-ups. We play Breaker and we play Sangin. Those are both pretty standard. And then we play Sinister Serpent. We don't play anything like Metamorphosis in this deck, but we do play things like Charity. And we also do play things like Creature Swap. I decided to add Serpent after I decided that I wanted to put Creature Swap in this deck because Creature Swap is great with not only Serpent, but it's great with um, Sangan, it's great with something like Tsukiyomi, and it's great with UFO Turtle. And man, it's just a really, really great card in general. Because, like, for instance, I'm going to quick run through with these. Serpent will end up going to your grave if you end up giving it to your opponent, then you get it back. Sangan will go to your grave if you end up giving it to your opponent, then you'll search. Tsukiyomi will end up staying face up on the field on, in most occasions, and then it ends up going back to your hand. And then if you have something like UFO Turtle and you decide to activate Creature Swap and you take your opponent's monster, then it will get swapped. And then you can attack over the UFO Turtle. And then UFO Turtle can then special summon out another copy of UFO Turtle or going to search a Katetsu. So Creature Swap pretty much just became a non-equipped Snatch Steal in general. You just stole your opponent's monster and they really have to out it. or They can't get it back just by destroying you know, it as an equip. So it's a really cool concept. Um, and I really, really do like Creature Swap for that, for that, um, you know, aspect of it. And the fact that you're, you know, playing multiple UFO Turtles, you can um, help just uh, cycle through them. And um, you have things that will keep reoccurring like Tsukiyomi and the Sinister Serpent. That made it to where Creature Swap was just that more live in general um, for this deck. So um, that is it for all the monsters. Now we're going to get into um, the spells. Uh, one thing, the last thing I want to point out, just poke where you can. None of your monsters really have, like, high attack the funny thing is, is I'm pretty sure Breaker has more attack than any other monster in the deck. So make sure you're poking with things like UFO Turtle. Poke with your flips and then Chain Book of Moon if they try to destroy them. And then poke with, you know, just really whatever you can. That's how you win with this deck. So, and that's how you get in damage. But now, on the spells, we play these three cards. Obviously, Cherry. Try to utilize it with, um, you know, pitching doubles. If you have double Tsukiyomi, mean, if you have Sarpan, you know, that kind of stuff. That's what you really want to pitch. We play two copies of Knock. 
Um, I play four of this if I could, man. This card is such a good card. You can abuse this with things like Sukiyomi. Suk and Nock is a combo that can out any monster that is face up on the field. Then we play things like Heavy Storm, which honestly, this is something that I sat out a lot um, just because of the fact that you want to make sure you're not destroying your own equips. And then we play Premature Burial and Snatch Steel. And these are two cards that are actually searchable by Katessi, which is just really, <laughs> really just broken, honestly. Then we play one copy of MST. And then for going on to the traps, we play two copies of Dust Tornado. I like this card because um, you want to really just try to snipe out your opponent's Dust Tornadoes and MSTs and, you know, that kind of stuff so that they aren't stealing, or I'm sorry, so that you can end up going, you know, a plus one with um, that Drakmore uh, equip spell card. And then we play, it's kind of just standard stuff called Haunted, Ring of Destruction, and Mirror Force. And then the tech that I play, one of the techs that I play for this deck is Mind Crush. Mind Crush is a cool card. Um, the reason why I play Mind Crush is because if your opponent's playing things like Tsukiyomi, which most Go decks are, then you want to be able to Mind Crush Tsukiyomi away. Because Tsukiyomi can keep flipping their monsters face down, and then this will just fall off. And you don't want them to abuse Tsukiyomi that way. But Mind Crush is also good because things like um, Merchant, Faith, and um, you know things like that. There's a lot of cards that will add cards to your opponent's hand, and you will have the knowledge of that, or they're, you know, just spirit monsters, things like, you know, it's your priest and Tsukiyomi and stuff, so this can be in the main, and this can be actually cited for some different stuff I'm going to show you, but I also want to point out that this can be solemn judgments, um, it's just kind of like player preference, I'm back and forth between this being mind crush, and then this being solemn judgment, because you really want the solemn judgments for whenever they activate knock on things like Katetsu, and, um, yeah, so keep in mind that these can be three solemn judgments, just really whatever you prefer. So, um, yeah, that's it for the main, and we're going to get into the side. Um, so, like I've said in all my other videos, I don't really like to try to bullshit with you guys. I'm not going to have 15 cards in my side deck that I've never even used. These are all the side cards that I have used with this deck. So, um, first of all, we play two Ashura Priest and one copy of Big Bang Shot. I want to give a shout out to my friend Mike Ridley for showing this to me. Big Bang Shot is really great. If you're playing against Go Control, you can side these in. A Shira Priest um, <laughs> attached with Big Bang Shot, and your opponent has Go Tokens, and she can just attack all of them. GG Go Control. That's pretty much how that goes. It is ridiculously cool. Check this card out. Big Bang Shot is absolutely amazing. Let me play a third copy of Dust Tornado. If I can see that my opponent is playing more Spell or Trap Disruption than, you know, the normal, I'll side that in. And then three copies of Kaiku. Um, it's really try to hard. It's, it's hard to try to find, you know ways to um, take cards out of your deck for things like Kaiku. I'm not I'm not gonna lie, but if you can find a way to make it work, then you know Kaiku is definitely a good contender. Kaiku is good against um, Chaos because man honestly like having your opponent's sorts and DLSs just banish your face up like UFO turtles and stuff, that really does hurt. So you want to try to prevent that stuff from happening if you can. So that is the deck guys. Let me know what y'all think down in the uh, comments below. I really do appreciate you guys just uh you know giving all of your feedback and whatnot for this deck it's a super fun deck very resourceful very um patient building i guess you could say but let me know what y'all think down below and uh, we'll see y'all later